Okay, Lauren Hughes here. We are going back to appraisal gap. So, and I'm bringing out the big guns, which is the whiteboard. So, with this market, especially in Colorado, we're seeing a lot more, our appraisal gaps are standard, almost standard now. And a year ago, most people had never even heard of them. And so if you're getting into the market or you've been in the market and you're like, why the heck are my offers not being accepted? Might be because of this little sucker right here. So an appraisal gap, that basically means you are willing to cover the difference in between the purchase price and the financing uh, price, which is also what the appraised value is. So what that means is you're willing to make up the difference. And that's how some people are winning homes right now is because they are overbidding what the house is actually worth. I will also say for the caveat, I have not had a single buyer pay over market value for a house, but that's just me and I treat your money like my money and I don't do it. However, it doesn't mean I'm not writing appraisal gaps and I'm gonna do it and when I write them for my own home, I do unlimited appraisal gaps. But we'll talk about that risk award and it's more gameplay on there. I'll write it, write it, but I know what the house is worth and I know what it's going to appraise for. Assuming there's a competent appraisal, which that's a whole nother topic. So appraisal gaps, let's say you're doing a $15,000 appraisal gap. What that actually means is, so let's say you have a house, half a million dollar house, which is the list price, but you're gonna go in at 515 because you're like, man, I'm really gonna get this house today. And so you're like 515 offer with a $15,000 appraisal gap, which means that you will cover a gap between the appraisal and the purchase price by up to $15,000. What that actually means is let's say we have three examples. The first being, let's say the appraisal comes back at 485. List price was 500. That means the agent overpriced it, but it doesn't really matter sometimes. So, and you want to make sure when you have a buyer's agent that they know how to do a comp analysis, but that goes back to the risk reward that we're going to talk about in just a minute. So I digress. Let's come back. So the 485 appraisal and with a $15,000 appraisal gap, you're now looking at $500,000 and which is still under the offer because you didn't do a full appraisal gap. It's only worth 15,000, even though the appraisal gap is actually 35 or 30,000, excuse me, in this offer. So you are now can come back to the table and negotiate with those sellers. Sometimes they'll negotiate, sometimes they won't. Uh, and that's also why sellers really want an unlimited appraisal gap right now, but you've got to really know what you're doing in order to do those and to protect your own money. Now let's say the appraisal comes back at 500,000, which was also the list price. Good job, agent, you got it right up, nail on the head. But you have a $15,000 appraisal gap and you actually offered 515. There's a $15,000 difference there between the appraisal and the purchase price. So now you're out 15, that 15 grand is going to be paid in cash to those sellers and the purchase price is 515,000, but you're actually only going to mortgage half a million dollars, which is what that appraisal came in for. Now let's say the appraisal comes in high. In this situation, the appraisal came in at 515, which means you get to finance the whole darn thing. You don't have to pay an additional $15,000. You just now get to finance $515,000 because it appraised for that and good on you for finding a good property and got, it, got lucky with an appraiser. So if you guys ever have any questions, this is my attempt to make it seem a little bit easier. It's a weird market and it's definitely education matters and who you work with matters on both sides. So thank you guys for tuning in.